These are slump molds. They're bowls that have been made on the wheel and bisked, and you can use soft slab to make bowls. We have a bunch in the studio. The slump molds in the studio come in a wide range of shapes and sizes, and you can use them to make bowls, or you can use them to make two parts that you combine into a sphere. Actually, you can combine as many parts as you want, so you can make a stacked vase if you want it. You want to start with the slab that you've compressed well on both sides. And you'll notice that I'm working on canvas because I don't want the clay to stick to the table. Then you're going to take the bowl form you want, and I've checked the interior and I decided I like this shape, and I'm going to place it very lightly on my slab, and I'm going to cut a circle wider than the bowl. And I'm not worried about it being pretty or perfect. It doesn't matter right now. Okay, taking this extra clay, I'm going to make it into a sphere so there's less surface area and wrap it in plastic off to the side so it won't dry out too fast. Okay, so I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to make a line from the middle to the outside. Now, my bolts, you can see, I can pick this up and I can kind of curve it and place it gently in my slump mold and I'm pressing it slowly into place. Okay, and you can see there's an overlapped bit um, right here. I'm just going to cut that off and then I have overlap here as well. Just peeled that out. Okay, and now I need to spend several minutes working and compressing and smoothing this into and against the bowl. So I like to use my thumb because I can feel between my thumb and finger how thick the clay is. If I notice that there's a place where maybe it's too thin, I can take some clay and just pinch it and work it in. So you can use a rib for this if you like. Doesn't matter. But you definitely want to take time compressing and working it in. Okay. Once you have gotten it way, the way you want it, use a fettling knife to cut the excess off the rim. So I'm just going to hold this. Okay. And I'm going to pop it out and see if I have any cracks or anything on the outside I need to repair. So I have a wear bone on the side, and I'm going to flip it and check. And so that's the seam that I want to repair. I'm, this is my serrated metal rib. I'm going to rough the seam up gently, smooth it so there's no marks on the other side. So one side's straight, one side serrated. And I know I can do more refining later. I just like to get rid of the seams. And now I'm going to just lay this gently back on top. Oops, I should just make that too. Flip it again. And now do my final, oops, smoothing piece of wood fill in there. Okay. Alright, so it takes some time to do that. And then when it's perfect, and I pop it out again, um, I can wait until it sets up and then I can add a foot to it, I can find the rim, or I can combine it with another, another part. So let me just flip it one more time. And this time, there's no seam, I would set it aside. So while my bowl is setting up, I'm gonna use this piece of wedged clay and I'm gonna make it into a lug, so it'll be a square that's very compressed and strong, and use a hand or extruder tool to make a foot. I'm gonna use a small one. Okay, so. Gravity and padding will help me shape it. It's gravity and padding. And you'll notice that it's gradually getting longer. And I can throw it. I, ah, so the clay's so plastic and fluid, um, throwing it just stretched it a little longer. So I'm going to do this until the piece is long enough to curve into a circle shape for my foot. I think it might be there now. 
So to use the lug, I'm going to take, I'm just going to pick it up so you can see it. I'm going to embed the handle extruder tool in so that the handle is perpendicular to the lug and pull it through. And when I open it up, I will have this beautiful shape. If I didn't wedge my clay well, I might have holes in it, like that little air bubble right there. Okay, so I'm setting this down gently and I'm gonna get a sponge and smooth the ridge away. Some people like the ridge, it catches glaze and it's like a decoration. Just gonna make it a little stronger and I'm gonna shape it. Maybe I will keep the ridge. Okay, I'm not gonna cut it yet. I'm just gonna shape it so that it knows it's gonna be round. It's too soft to add. If I put anything heavy on it, it would just smush. Okay, so here's my bowl and I'm ready to add my foot. By the way, this is a foot. Gives you something to hold on to when you're glazing and it keeps the bottom of the bowl away from the surface of the kiln. So there's less in contact, it's less likely to um, crack in the firing and I think it looks nice. It gives it some lift. So here's my soft ring. Figuring out how round I want it to be and how large I want it to be. And I'm going to cut gently. Beveled angle. Making parallel beveled cuts. And the reason I'm doing an angled cut is because it's more surface area. So then I want to use a little water to join the ring together. Water's gonna act as glue. I'm gonna scratch it up. They'll hold together. Gently wiggle that together. Okay. This is a little soft still, All right? So I'm gonna figure out where I would place it. Um, and then I would mark it. Lightly, a few guide marks so I know where to score. If I score in an area where I don't want there to be scratch marks, I'll have to refine it when it's leather hard. I'll just have to smooth away those unintentional marks. Okay, so I'm gonna score this side. I'm scoring both pieces are going to be attached. I'm going to place it and I'm going to gently wiggle it into place. I have a second board and I'm going to sandwich it and flip. Okay, so now you can see I have a foot. Um, the rim of the bowl still needs to be refined, so I'd probably use a little water on my fingers and round the rim. Some people might find a sponge useful. I'm not a fan of the sponge because it takes away the fine particles of clay and makes it feel gritty. So I would refine the rim. I want you to see the difference between the area that's refined right here and the area that's not. So you don't want these sharp edges. So another thing I could do I didn't want a bowl. If I didn't want a bowl, I could combine two parts. I would have to slip and score, and then I could make a sphere. So you can see that you can get different shapes. That's it.